Hello everybody and welcome to another one of our five cool cards for X Investigator series. And today we're changing up the formula a little bit. Um, Travis and I have chosen five cards that we think are cool for Jacqueline Fine. And we're gonna have Bryn explain why he thinks we chose these cards and why these cards might be cool in Jacqueline Fine. Uh, just to kind of change up the flow a little bit. He he stepped to go to like to get a drink while Travis and I were coming up the list and we came up with it super quick. So we thought, why not? Let's let's test them. So Bryn, are you ready? Let's go. All right. Card number one. Uh, card number five is Paradoxical Covenant. So this okay. is a permanent. Uh, limit one covenant per deck to experience. As a reaction, after an investigator at your location performs the reveal chaos token step of a skill test, if both a blessed token and a curse token are revealed during that test, exhaust it. This test automatically succeeds. Remove each of the blessed and cursed tokens revealed this way. And this is from the Innsmouth Conspiracy Cycle. Bryn, why do we think this card is cool in Jacqueline Fine? So this card has to be cool in Jacqueline Fine because with her reaction ability, you get to reveal more tokens. And more tokens means it's more probable that you'll find the ones that you're looking for in order to be bad Father Mateo. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. However, when it works, you're going to feel like you're so cool. Yeah. And like, really like Paradoxical Covenant has a little asterisk next to it. And like, this includes all of like, like it's going to have like, you're going to have more of this. You're going to build around this entire Paradoxical Covenant. Mm -hmm. This is just like the one that represents the archetype. If you haven't seen our archetype video for this uh, archetype, it's up on the channel right now. So you should go watch it and we'll talk about the cool things that this archetype yeah. can do. Yeah, I bet, uh, I bet Jacqueline Fine is pretty cool for that uh, that archetype, despite the fact that she doesn't get to play any cards from other colors, which are normally help you shore up your numbers. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think this one, Paradoxical Covenant, is also kind of super fun with her, um, her personal asset, where it allows you to do it twice. Um, <laughs> because if you miss on the first one, you just don't use it for your second one. But if you hit on your first one, you can uh, draw on your <laughs> second one. And even if you just have one... It kind of actually, in an interesting way, because uh, I agree with Travis, even though like I really enjoy playing Jacqueline Fine, but I liked playing her using it for my investigators as opposed to myself. Like anything that can change her play pattern from just being really strong and boring is exciting. So what this does, it uh, when you take a test, you can choose instead to not draw for your first one and just like hope you hit this and then like make your second one more likely to hit it. And as I said, anything that changes her play pattern is interesting to me because just being might, really uh, strong isn't that exciting. You might even get one of your one of your teammates to be able to put a Tristan bot land to play for free. Let's go. It could work. I value. Yeah. All right, Bryn, are you ready for number four? All right. Okay, we have the Shining Trapezohedron. This is a one cost, four experience, commits for a brain, a book, and a foot, takes up your accessory slot. As a reaction, when you would pay the cost of a spell card, exhaust Shining Trapezohedron. Instead, test Brain X, where X is that card's resource cost. If you succeed, its, uh, it's resource cost is considered paid. If you fail, cancel the plane of that card without paying any of its cost. For the remainder of the round, you cannot play copies of that card. This is from the Dream Eaters cycle. Bryn, why is this card cool? All right. This one's got to be here because the Shining Trapezohedron is normally very, very powerful, but with you know, a fairly steep downside of, like, if you screw up, you don't get to play that card at all this turn. Uh, whatever it was you were trying to do. However, we're Jacqueline, fine, and we can see into the future. And in the future, we have shriveling that we didn't pay for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, or, you know, whatever your choice of spell card is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you didn't pay for it. Yeah. Uh, plus, we got five brain, which puts us, like, well ahead of the game trying to trying to make these tests yeah uh, this yeah it's it's got to it's got to be because the the reaction effect makes you much more likely to pass the test when you need to mm -hmm. uh, well, Bryn, i can tell you you're two for two so far um, i mean i think he's figured out that there's only one interesting thing about Jacqueline. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and like what's what's also cool about this one to expand on what Bryn is saying like it, it makes it more of a sure thing but it also just changes the play pattern because you could use it to get your sixth sense or like 
like to like get a bunch of clues or you can try to do these other things that are less just like you know make the game boring and playing assets is fun and playing them for nothing and using your ability to ensure it happens also sounds really fun yeah yeah it's also worth noting that it cancels the action as well that was spent as to uh, to play the spell in question mm. so it doesn't cost you the action to not get the spell you just don't get the spell and you can't play it this turn oh that's cool yeah yeah sweet i you know i'm, I do pre I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that's what it says right like it, yeah it's inclu including its action cost yeah. so like it, it you just if you uh you know it means that maybe using this to try to pay for things like ives for hands or storm spirits is a little bit riskier than your teammates might like you playing things mm -hmm. But uh, you know, if you're trying to, if you're just trying to run your shriveling out so that you'll have it for future turns, and you do end up failing, yeah, yeah, I'm, I mean, I do kind of like the flex of using it to pay for a spectral razor, but then not on the spectral razor itself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. You just run the spectral razor test naked. Like it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's go. Number three. We have. Seal of the Seventh Sign. This is a four cost, five experience, spell slot asset that commits for a brain and a wild. Seal the auto fail token uses seven charges. If Seal of the Seventh Sign has no charges or if it leaves play, remove it from the game. Forced, after a skull, cultist, tablet, or squid token is revealed during any skill test, remove one charge from Seal of the Seventh Sign. Bryn, can you guess why we thought this card was cool? So I'm trying to figure out what parts uh, of like paying four for something that you're going to break in two turns is cool. <laughs> uh, but you get to you get to cancel non non auto fail tokens mm -hmm. much easier than you get to cancel the auto fail. Yeah, and that probably has something to do with this. However, that being said, when you use your psychic power, you reveal extra tokens, and the extra tokens you reveal might be the kind that take charges off this mm -hmm. so like there is there's a little bit a little bit of give and take there where like well this is in play every time that you use your uh every time well i shouldn't say every time pretty close to every time that you use your psychic power to do a thing it's gonna work Yeah, this one was more a representative of the seal archetype in general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where, yeah, like, I'll, I'll... the less bad cards, if there are best bad tokens there are in there, then, like, the less tokens you got revealed, but then the no reveal autofail was a big part of it. Yeah. 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 Like, you can, because the, the tokens that you reveal and then cancel are still revealed, uh, there is a possibility of just exploding this real quick. But that always kind of exists. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like, as well with Seal of the Seventh Sign, you want to do the package that Travis built for Bryn as a joke, which was <laughs> making it so that he could charge it with, like, a million charges. So, I mean... Yeah, yeah I think I had, like, 22 charges on it one, one yeah. scenario. It's yeah. kind of wild. Sick. All right, let's go to number two. Bryn, are you ready? Shards of the Void! Three cost, three experience, commits for... Oh, sorry, this is one second. This is from the Forgotten Age cycle. I forgot to say that. Anyway, back to our regular schedule programming. Shards of the Void. Three cost, three experience, spell, asset that takes up a spell slot. Commits for a brain and a fist. Seal the zero. Uses three charges. As an action, you can spend a charge or release a chaos token sealed here. Fight. This attack uses brain instead of fist and deals plus one damage. You get plus two brain for this attack for each zero token sealed on Shards of the Void. For each zero token revealed during this attack, seal that token on Shards of Void, and this attack deals one additional damage. Bryn, can you... I can't even fathom you getting why we thought this one was cool. So, it's probably something to do with the fact that you want to reveal <laughs> zero tokens to get extra charges on that. Damn it, he's cracked the code. <laughs> Got it. On the Shards of the Void, and you get to reveal extra tokens. So, mm -hmm. uh... It's much more much more likely that you will find those zero tokens to add on to shards of the void. I I think this one's also really cool because um, like a lot of the other spells have negative effects when you reveal the bad symbols, right? And they can really hurt Jacqueline. Um, 
but this one is just like mm -hmm. all upside and like yeah. you can spend the zeros as charges so feasibly this card can just never run out this and is true like you already have plus two you already have like five brains so like even just getting plus two from one zero and then using all the other zeros for other stuff like seems actually pretty sick no it mm -hmm. does yeah this is probably my favorite shriveling variant upgraded shriveling variant mm -hmm. uh, it's sad that there is no i find it sad that there's no level zero one but i also understand why there isn't one mm -hmm. sick uh, this is from the Forgotten Age cycle, for everyone who might be curious. Uh, I think the majority of the sealed cards, if not all of them, are from the Forgotten Age. There might be a few. I know there's sealing in Innsmouth, but just for, like, Bless and Curse Tokens and, like, plus one in Elder Sign. But the majority of them are from Forgotten, from Forgotten Age. Age. Yeah, yeah. most most of them are from the Forgotten Age, because they were part of uh, part of Father Mateo's. Yeah, his old shtick. Stash. And as you said, if you want to be bad Father Mateo, we can jump through those hoops with these cool cards. <laughs> yeah. All right, Bryn, are you ready for number one? Do you have a guess of what you think it is? I have no idea. I honestly, like, almost never play with purple cards. All right. Well, this one's just for you. We got the Jewel of Oriolus. This is a three-cost, three-experience uh, item relic asset that takes up the accessory slot, commits for a wild, and then after a uh, skull... Actually, basically any symbol except the Elder Sign is revealed during a skill test at your location. Exhaust it to draw a card or gain two resources. What do you yeah. think, Bryn? What makes this one cool? <laughs> well, I always think this one's cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, not so much has changed. But in particular for Jacqueline, obviously with our reaction ability, you get to you get to reveal extra tokens, which means that you're probably going to be triggering the, the Jewel of Aureolus like every turn. Yeah. Any any time it's ready, you probably have a shot, a pretty good shot at making sure that you either gain those resources or draw that card. Yeah, like, yeah, like, really. Yeah. Do you, like, do you not want to make your reaction ability better? Because, I mean, it's already pretty strong, so that's fair, but, <laughs> like. I don't know what you do. And, and as we, I just yeah. have a five brain. Yeah. yeah. This card keeps your, keeps your hand full of other things to do and make sure you got the money to pay for them. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, you sacrifice having like a Holy Rosary in play or the Crystal Pendulum that makes my brain hurt. But <laughs> like the difference between five and six is a lot smaller than the difference between four and five. Just this like, is true. Yeah. Which is kind of like... there are lots of, lots of ways to pump your brain. Yeah. And if you just Today, quote what I just said, like out of context to someone, they'd be like, this person, we need, we're worried about him. But yeah. in terms Math of our performance, the same. It's, yeah, it's... Totally accurate. Well, um, thanks for watching, everybody, for five cool cards for Jacqueline Fine. Bryn, you get a five out of five. You nailed it. So um, there's no prize. I mean, I guess the prize is you're going to help me choose five cards for Stella, and then we're going to make Travis ex easily explain why they're cool. Because actually, honestly, because with you fails. behind the wheel, it might be a bit weirder. So um, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next episode in a few weeks for five cool cards for Stella Clark. And then we're going to be jumping around to all the other investigators. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.